Hi, my name is Andrew Mitchell and I'm Director of the Wesley Hospitals at Ashfield and Cogra. The aim of this video is to provide you and your family with information and answers to questions you might have about electroconvulsive therapy or ECT. Over the course of this video, you will discover what ECT is, how the course of treatment is undertaken and some of the potential side effects. You will also meet Professor Colleen Liu, who is the director of our service. Professor Liu is leading the way in treatment outcomes and in research at the University of New South Wales. Our hope is the video will provide you with a basis for making an informed choice when it comes to ECT. We really do want to provide you with the very best of care. ECT is the most effective treatment we have in psychiatry particularly for the treatment of depression. ECT stands for electroconvulsive therapy. It's a medical treatment which involves passing a very brief current across the brain while you're under general anaesthetic. I would meet and greet um, the people coming for ECT and I would certainly explain that they would be an inpatient and they would be here for probably three to four weeks so that we could do a 12 course session of ECT. So to get started on that they would need to see our general practitioner first and just have some routine blood tests taken and a uh, ECG reading of the heart just to make sure that that's okay and then the treating psychiatrist would obviously sit down with the patient and uh, discuss ECT and what it's involved and how it works and um, get the consent from the patient. On the morning of ECT, uh, you'd be woken up quite early, say about 6.30. Uh, you would have been fasting from midnight the night before. The staff would bring you to a small waiting room where you wait until it's your turn. Uh, that waiting room you should go straight to the ECT suite. So when it's your turn, we would come and call you, you walk in, we would ask you to lie on the bed. Uh, two things happen while you're lying on the bed. One is that the anaesthetist puts in a small needle in your vein, and that's to give you the anaesthetic to put you to sleep. At the same time, the psychiatrist sticks, you know, just quite small little spongy pads uh, on your forehead, uh, behind your ears, and usually one on your chest. What they do is, they, they pick up tiny electrical currents and they monitor your brain waves during the ECT. Technically it's called an EEG and you might have had a version of this you know, in the neurology clinic, for example, where they're just measuring your brain waves to see what your brain wave pattern is like. That's one of the ways we monitor ECT. Uh, we might put a little blood pressure cuff around your ankle and again that just helps us to monitor the treatment. Uh, when everything is, is ready, then the anaesthetist would uh, give you a bit of anaesthetic into the vein the anaesthetic nurse would hold a, uh, just a mask for you to breathe oxygen as you're going off to sleep and you fall asleep very quickly. So typically within a few seconds of the anaesthetic being injected, you would fall asleep. Uh, while you're asleep, then the anaesthetist makes sure that there's plenty of oxygen in your body uh, and the psychiatrist then administers that very brief current for a few seconds uh, across the brain. You would then have, say, about a 30 second seizure and there's very little seizure activity to see because of the anaesthetic agents. The seizure naturally comes to an end and then you would gradually wake up, usually a few seconds after that. Uh, we make sure that you're fine, we turn you on your side so that, you know, just in case some saliva comes out, you know, doesn't go down the wrong way. Uh, then we wheel you out to the recovery room. Uh, you would wake up there, there'd be a nurse looking after you. Typically you'd spend, say, about 10 minutes there and you're, you know, gradually becoming more and more awake. They're measuring your blood pressure and your heart rate. Uh, uh, and then they would get you up when you're, when you're ready. Uh, and then you would go back to the ward. So short-term side effects include effects of anesthesia. Uh, so that includes things like you know, nausea, vomiting, etc. Uh, other side effects are you know, headache, uh, muscle aches and pains. Again, that's from the anesthetic, not from the ECT. Uh, but I guess the one that most people are concerned about are memory side effects. Uh, so short-term memory side effects are reasonably common with ECT and typically what that looks like is that the patient doesn't have a, a memory of everything that's happened 
during the time that they were having a course of ECT. So they might typically have six to 12 treatments over two to four weeks. And patients you know, might say, oh, so-and-so visited me and I don't remember that uh, during that two to four weeks. And that's because those memories don't get laid down properly in the first place, uh, because these are all things happening you know, in the middle of the course of ECT. Now, sometimes people will say that for a few weeks after they finish ECT, they still have trouble learning new things. So for example, you know, a week later, someone tells them a phone number and they're having trouble remembering the eight digits, whereas you know, usually they, they wouldn't have that problem. Uh, that kind of problem resolves over a few weeks. So that typically, a few months after ECT, that's no longer the problem. Uh, so, so those kind of uh, problems with learning new things are temporary side effects. Uh, it can take a few weeks to resolve, but they are temporary. Um, the other longer-term side effects, uh, which are not so common, are that some people say that they have patchy loss, loss of past memories. So they have patchy loss of past memories for things that happened before the course of ECT. So they might say, for example, you know, I used to know about a holiday that I went on 20 years ago, and since I've had ECT, I can't recall that holiday. And I know I used to know about it because you know, my family told me so, and now I can't remember that. Now, it's not as if they forget you know, everything for like the last 20 years. So we're talking about just isolated memories that they've forgotten. Uh, this is it's not as common, but it can happen. And the important thing is to tell people beforehand that it can happen. My own experience is that patients who've had ECT and who've had that side effect, uh, and when they're unwell the next time, you know, they're usually the ones asking for ECT. So when we tell them all this information, they say, yes, yes, yes. And when we remind them that you, know, you can have patchy loss of past payments, they'll say to me, look, I've had that. And given the benefits that ECT has given me, it far outweighs that problem. That taking that into account, I'm very happy to have ECT and you know, it's very much worth it. Uh, it's much better than not having ECT. So I think, I think the main issue is that we're upfront about that and explain that clearly to people. And as I said, the other thing to remember is that with the new form of ECT, ultra brief pulse with stimulation, uh, those side effects are minimal. Uh, and in, certainly in terms of some of the research studies, people have had no side effects whatsoever, both the short term and the long term memory effects uh, with this new form of ECT. Look, access to our hospitals and to all the services, including ECT, is free to anyone who has private health care cover. Now, the special thing in mental health care is that you only need to have cover for two months to gain access to all the services. The questions of a waiting period of 12 months or the question of pre-existing conditions don't apply in our case. So if you pay you have health cover for two months, you can gain access to all of our services with no extra cost. That's everyone in Australia.